Shadow? Varya. Varya? Isn't that the person that Avakir guy Shh. was... But why are you here? Wait. Don't tell me you've given up on the crown contest and come crawling back home from Dana already. Nothing to say? Even though you were willing to kill Tarnigan to secure your position as Lord, you still... Kill? I'm here to take care of something. If you wish to continue this conversation, I only ask that you wait until I'm finished. Oh, of course. You always did prefer to take the coward's way out. Even after seven years and living on that Danon rock, you haven't changed one bit. But let me tell you, I haven't changed either. Not a day's gone by the past seven years that I haven't hated you. If killing me will bring you peace, then so be it. <laughs> Dohalim, what the hell are you saying? First, I have business to take care of. If it's vengeance you seek, I will grant you it. But you must wait. My sins are legion. Let me finish what I came to do. Then you have my word. I will let you do whatever brings you peace. Sure, that's it. Run away like always. You don't even have the courage to die. No wonder you leave it to someone else. You're just a coward! Dohalim. I apologize that you had to witness that. Is it true? What she said about you killing someone? Each of us have our pasts. I am no exception. Before, back in Menencia, you mentioned having taken a friend's life over the throne. Is that what she meant? The mistakes I made there were not my first, and may not be my last. I will say no more. Did you mean what you said? About letting her take your life if she wanted to? She has more right to my life than anyone. But you can't just... Whatever happens, I have sworn to put an end to the Crown Contest, and to ensure continued coexistence in Menencia. I have no intention of expiring before I do so. There are far too many questions I still seek answers to. Besides, you have just as much reason to kill me as she does. <laughs> Dohalim! Forgive me. Some things are best left unsaid.
place is beautiful. Yeah, it must be some sort of rest and leisure area for the locals. You think? Man, these Renans sure know how to live it up, don't they? <sighs> it, is something the matter, Dohalim? Before I went down to Dana, my friends and I, we... We used to gather at this very spot and play music together. Avakir, Faria, and Tarnigan. <laughs> that was a lifetime ago now. Tarnigan. He was the one that Faria mentioned, right? He was once my dearest, closest friend. <sighs> as well as Faria's betrothed. <laughs> Despite Faria's lower class upbringing, she possesses a tremendous talent for music. Entranced by her playing, I helped her overcome her sense of inferiority and introduced her to Tarnigan and Avakir. It was a time of great joy. Four people bound only by their love of music, with no care for social standing. Only the next song, the next melody. A friendship based on mutual respect, and a society where everyone is a prisoner to their social class. You really are different, Dohalim. I suppose it's natural you would see it as strange. I would have, once. Now, I think the idea of breaking away from society's constraints and choosing your friends based solely on affection is something beautiful that's worth cherishing. Besides, it was that way of looking at the world that laid the foundations for coexistence in Menencia. Your praise does me too great an honor. I was merely following the wishes of my own heart. And even then, it only lasted until the crown contest began. After that, Tarnigan and I became fierce competitors for the position of Lord. Tarnigan had fallen for Faria. By becoming Lord, he aimed to wrest her from her humble origins and raise her to the highest echelons of society. But fate was not so benevolent. What happened? Tarnigan was no match for me in combat. On a level playing field, he wouldn't have stood a chance. But he was desperate and low on options, and he couldn't stand the thought of defeat. You mean he resorted to dirty tactics to try to win, right? But then why does Faria think... Wait, don't tell me she doesn't know. How could I tell her? Combined with the trauma of losing her beloved, and by her friend's hand, no less, she would have been devastated. So instead you let her go on hating you, so she could use that hate as a crutch for her grief? <laughs> That's not the same as running away, though. It is exactly the same. Unable to face the loss of my friend and the burden of my duty, instead I decried my fate and looked away from what I'd done. As for what happened after... That you already know. But if you hadn't become Lord, Menencia wouldn't be what it is now. The Danans there would still be suffering under Renan oppression like before. <sighs> Shion's right. What other Lord would have treated me as you did? Anyone else and I would have been dead long ago. You've saved so many people, Dohalim. You saved me. It's thanks to you that I'm here today. So, try not to blame yourself. The burden you've placed on your own shoulders is too much for anyone to bear. Frank as always. But, I shall do my best to heed your advice. Do you think he'll be all right? Yeah, I think so. He's got Kisara. It's important to have someone like that. I didn't realize how difficult it is just to be there for someone. 
Sometimes just knowing someone's on your side can be enough. And he knows, Xion. I promise he does. I hope you're right. Alfin. Yeah? I never appreciated until recently just how much you were always there to support me. It goes both ways. You've helped me keep going more times than I can count. Maybe, but I still wanted to say thank you. I see a medic and supply officer over there. If they know you're with me, they'll likely offer their assistance. Checked your equipment lately? on them. Whatever happens, be you ready. Well, so much for them not wanting to fight. Oh, I am Lord Dohalim of Hells and Men and Fear. I command you. Threats to the city must be a race. No. Have they been brainwashed, King? Brainwashed or not. If they want to fight, they got one. Deny! Uh, ignite! <laughs> Be my guest. Regenerate. I can see this all day. Take this. Fire support. I'll crush you. Lightning reflexes. Tenebrous claw. Go for it. This one's got your name on it! Cast the threat! Not a chance! I'll tear you up! Leave the threat for these days! Ready, Splash! Hell and Hurricane! I'll crush you! Lightning reflexes! Tenebrous Claw! Eat this! World Revolution! Come on, Aurora! Now take this! Trouble! By the power of the flames! Impossible! <laughs> 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 
Those soldiers seem different from the citizens we've come across so far. Yeah, they weren't big talkers, that's for sure. They just attacked without warning. They weren't in the least bit phased by Dohalim's presence either. Indeed, they seemed to recognize us as enemies, nothing more. And yet, traditionally, Lenigus hasn't been high on threats. A few frenzied zoogles during experiments here and there, but not much else. Their glazed-over eyes reminded me of the soldiers and slaves we met back in Ganeth Haros. The ones in blind devotion to Volron. I've never seen anything like that here on Lenigus before. Maybe someone doesn't want us here, and the soldiers are their way of letting us know. Well, with the Red Woman, the Sovereign, and Volron, they're starting to develop quite the growing list of adversaries. At least we'll know to keep our wits about us. Come in handy when crafting weapons. Get lost! You see what happened there is you crossed me. You shouldn't have done that. Oh, 
miss it. I couldn't make it in time. Don't push yourself too hard. An opponent like this should be easy. Oh, Engaging! Are bearing fruit. Take this! Take this! Watch this! Power of water! Inferno Blast! Blue away! Tempest! Rain Blast! 
There's always room for improvement. Those soldiers don't seem to have any qualms about attacking on sight. Retreat if you know what's good for you. Take this! As if the normal creepy crawlies aren't disgusting enough. I need to pull my thumbs together. Run! 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 Try harder! You're mine! You need healing. I expect you'll be in high demand if that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> 
Consider well if this is the right path. This must be it. The entrance to the Forbidden Zone. But it's just a wall. How do we get through? Whoa, we? I thought this was Sovereigns only. Alfin. Interesting. If Alfin's presence still opens the way, it would seem the Sovereign of three centuries ago and now are considered one and the same. What? What the... Alfin. You again. Tomorrow's the spirit channeling ceremony. We'll finally play our parts as the Sovereign and Maiden. How have you been feeling? What am I Sovereign of? Shuffled from lab to lab, always treated like an experiment. Whenever they look at me, all they see is a Danon. I don't even know what their precious ceremony's for. 
let alone what they're going to force me to do as the Sovereign. Tell me, if we're both in the same boat, why do you seem so calm right now? No choice. Becoming the Maiden's not something I wanted for myself. But they... they said Rena's prosperity depended on it. How could I say no after that? Still, as a Renan, at least you got to decide. Good for you. Meanwhile, I was taken from my homeland. You aren't the captive one here. It isn't right what they did to you, and I'm sorry for what it's worth. When this is over, I swear I'll help you get home. I can't do this alone. One more day. How could I say no to that? It's not like I have any choice in the matter anyway. So, what's your name? It's Naori. Naori Imeris. Try to remember this time. You don't act like them. Like the other Renans, I mean. How come you treat me like a person? Because you are. It's true we come from different worlds. But neither one of us asked to be here right now. In that sense, you and I are much the same. We couldn't do this. We wouldn't be able to talk to each other as people. If we didn't see the humanity in each other. So I suppose the question you should be asking is, why wouldn't I treat you like one? You're not like the others. Maybe they're not like me. Here's what we'll do. We give them their damn ceremony. You get me to Dana. That'll be the end of it. I'm taking you at your word on this. I'm trusting you, not them. Nayori. What the hell just happened? That vision. Did everyone else see it too? That person Alvin was speaking to, she looked exactly like Shion. It was Naori. Naori Imeris. Isn't that right? <sighs> yeah, that's right. She really does look like Shion. I'm beginning to see why Alvin was so confused. That's all very well and fine, but what did we just witness exactly? It was too real to be a mere hallucination. It was a conversation we had 300 years ago, the night before the ceremony. You mean all of that really happened? We just saw an episode straight out of your past? But how was that even possible, unless... Could this be the Red Woman's handiwork too? No, I don't think so. Why not? You guys didn't feel it? The moment the entrance opened, it was like a stream of Dan and Astral energy rushing over us. I felt it too. And not for the first time, either. It was the same sensation as back inside the Wedge. That would make sense. After all, vast amounts of Dana's astral energy were being siphoned and sent up here to Lenigus. For all we know, perhaps we're close to the spot where all that energy was stored. So you think it might have been the energy itself that was responsible for that vision we just saw? But how? And why? We have no way of knowing. Maybe it's not even as deliberate as all that. Shion, you okay? Yeah. It was all just a little sudden. That's all. So that was my ancestor, huh? It was like looking into a mirror. Yeah, there certainly is a resemblance. What about you? How are you holding up? Me? Even putting aside the question of where that vision came from, it's likely we'll see more of those. Reliving painful episodes from your past. Do you think you can handle it? I can't just pretend like the past never happened. Besides, if it helps us uncover the truth of what that ceremony really was, it might also lead to answers about your thorns. Alfin. That's not all. This whole time, we've been fighting to free Dana from the Renans. But now that we're here, it seems those same Renans might have it just as bad. I'd like to liberate them too, if I can. Which is just another reason I can't afford to shield my eyes from the truth. Whether you're on Dana or somewhere else, you always stay the same. Your indignation and righteous passion 
your desire to free and protect, they're all hardwired into you. Not that I'm complaining. Come on, let's bust this thing wide open. Nobody's here. Stay sharp. After that last illusion, there's no telling what could happen in here. Faria, how did you get in here? Wait, something about her isn't right. What's wrong with her? She doesn't even seem to know where she is. Yeah, you're right. She looks just like the soldiers we encountered outside. She never had that kind of power when- We can talk later. Here it comes! What? I've never known Faria can throw noodles like that before. How about with a stone that looks suspiciously like a master sword? What the... Where did she get her hands on that? First we handle the noodles. Then we get the master sword. No further! further. Not Give me. This is my fault, not my fight. 
In a bind. Death in the wind. We fly away. They smite with black and blade. Try harder. Execution. From beyond, imbue this vanquished soul.
further. too powerful to control. At this rate, her body won't be able to take much more. Johalina! Forgive me. Man, I thought we were goners. Everything okay? Yes. She's only unconscious. Not her. I meant you. Shion, please, can you treat her? I can try, but I can't promise she'll be back to her real self when she wakes up. All I can do is heal her physically. We're not even supposed to be in here. Maybe it'd be better if we moved her to somewhere a little safer, don't you think? In that case... I'll take her off your hands. You? Avakir, what are you doing here? I was curious what you were up to, so I took the liberty of following you to find out. I overheard what you said about Tarnigan, about how he really died. I'm sorry, I had no idea. And you believed me? What makes you so sure I wasn't lying? I like to think I know you a little better than that, Dohalim. Give me some credit. <laughs> I'll take Faria. Leave her with me. I know better than to ask what you're up to, but whatever it is, I hope it all works out. Thank you. He seems like a good friend. He hasn't changed. He never was one to stand out. Instead, he was always hanging back, worrying about everyone else. As for Faria, it's always the closest to me who get hurt. You don't seriously blame yourself for what happened to her, do you? Somebody got to her, to strike back at me. Someone who knew me well enough to know that I'd hesitate to fight back. And the same goes for you as well. Neither you nor Faria would have lost loved ones, if it wasn't for me. You're wrong. Kelzalik was the one who killed my brother, under orders from Almadria. As for Tarnigan, if it weren't for the crown contest, he'd still be alive. That and the whole damn hierarchy that makes it possible. But that's why we're fighting. To put an end to this whole messed up system that treats people as expendable. Indeed. Ridding society of this blight is really the only way I know how to atone for my sins. You can't atone, Dohalim. <laughs> I know it hurts to hear. But those people are dead. No amount of soul-searching or trying to make amends is going to change that. Forgiveness, acceptance, those ships have sailed. So I just forget the harm I caused? No, the opposite, in fact. You remember. You never forget. You keep it in your heart always. And then you go on living. Not for those already passed, but for those still alive. For those still alive? Kisara's right. So long as we've still got breath in our bodies, we can make a difference in the lives of others. Lives being the operative word. That's what living's all about. Being able to still make a difference. Punishing yourself for the past won't make the pain of your conscience go away. Only fixing the problem in its stead. Is that what you're saying? That's right. You have to live for tomorrow, Dohalim. Not for yesterday. And not only that, you need to live for yourself. 
and for the change that you still can be. <sighs> I shall try. Don't forget, we've still got a mystery to solve. The Forbidden Zone, remember? Xion. Huh? Thank you. You have my deepest gratitude for what you did for Faria. Glad to be of service. I'm glad we could stop Faria without hurting her. You all did much for her as well. I'm most grateful. Oh, shucks. We're on the same team, right? Let's move on. What is it, Rinwell? Do you hear something again? Yeah. It's that voice. The will of Dana's astral energy. What? There's so much astral energy. But where's it all coming from? It's almost like... it's alive. That was the spirit channeling ceremony just now. No, it was more than that. What the hell was that? It felt like everything was on the brink of... Like the whole world was seconds from... Oblivion. It's the same vision as the one my thorns show me. A vision of impenetrable darkness that swallows up us and everything else. An empty void. A nothing so complete and dominating that there aren't even words to describe it. The end of time. The visions of the apocalypse you've been seeing. If I'd known how bad they were, I... Uh. So, everything we just saw, those were Naori's memories, right? That's right. It was as if her innermost thoughts were speaking directly to us. At least I know they weren't mine. That power flowing into her... It reminds me of Xion's thorns. If they're what's responsible for all these visions she's been having, then maybe... Maybe my thorns are made from that same astral energy? If that is the case... We just found the missing link between your thorns and what happened here three centuries ago. No, more than a link. Perhaps even the very heart of the matter. I've never felt astral energy so powerful. What was that? 
If it's the same energy your thorns are made of, it must be dark astral energy, right? And isn't that something only Renans have? Correct. Dark astral energy is possessed by Renans alone. And when enough astral energy gathers together, it develops its own form of sentience. If so, maybe that complete oblivion is exactly what the Renan astral energy's will is wishing for. But why? I don't know. Will can be a pretty vague thing to nail down. It's more of a feeling, just like the will of Dana. But the will of Dana is made up of astral energy too, right? And if that's what's been showing us these visions... I don't know, should we really be getting so involved with this thing? Dana's will would never want oblivion! But you can't say that for sure! Cut it out, you two. Squabbling over theories will get us nowhere. <sighs> Let's keep moving. If it's Dana's will showing us these memories, then I'm as clueless about its motives as any one of us. But if it could lead us to the truth, then I want to find out more. Shion's right. All we can do is keep going. If these really are Naori's memories we're watching, there could be truths in them I was never aware of. And I think they may be the kinds of truths I need to confront if we're going to keep fighting. I'm sorry about what I said earlier. Come on, let's go. Finally, we begin to understand what the thorns are. Yes, and their source. A ceremony that occurred three centuries ago. But we still don't know how to get rid of them. I just hope we can find a way. Soon, we might very well learn the truth behind Shion's thorns. As well as my own past. I have to be ready to face anything. Whatever happens. I just need a little time first. Do you think Faria was really being controlled by someone? Certainly seemed that way. The question is, who? The Red Woman? The same person who's behind all of this, I'll bet. Whoever that is. Brainwashed or otherwise, the feelings of resentment she holds towards me are real. Someone used her because they knew we'd hold back. If that's not playing dirty, I don't know what is. It does tell us one thing, at least. Someone here in Lenegas is watching us. Someone who means us harm. There's no question. That attack was meant for us alone. By someone capable of getting inside a person and manipulating them like a weapon. We need to find whoever it is, fast. That vision we saw, it was as if it was meant specifically for us. What do you make of it? Do you still think the will of Dana might be involved somehow? Maybe it's trying to tell us something. But what? Well, it could be supernatural. You know, like seeing dead people, messages from beyond the grave, ghost-type stuff. That, that's your grand theory? That we're being haunted? Come on, Law. Wait. He might be closer to the mark than you think. What if a person's thoughts and deeds were to somehow become indelibly etched into the ether of a place? And what if those with a connection could then somehow pick up on them? You think that's what it was? Some kind of message someone left here for us? I am merely entertaining the possibility. Whether it was Dana's will, or somehow connected to the Sovereign and Maiden's powers, I do not know. Okay, back up a sec. You're saying that if a place is full of enough astral energy, it can somehow show us events that happened centuries ago? More to the point, how does that much astral energy gather in one place anyway? Seems unlikely it happened naturally. Whatever it was, it survived here intact for 300 years. Whoever left it for us, the strength of their intent is beyond doubt. The strength of their intent? 